You always have options if you have the balls. Yeah, that's the slogan that is printed on the front of the bottle from Iron Balls Gin, a Thai gin with a fresh tropical twist. Let's check it out. Hi guys and welcome back to Hi on Gin. I have a confession to make. I know that I talk a lot and sometimes my episodes get quite, well shall we just say, detailed. And that's the real problem of being a true gin nerd. I want all the details in my episodes. So I have given myself a task to try to limit my talking. I will now talk about one gin, give you the story of the gin, talk about the botanicals used, and I will give you two suggestions on how to serve it in around three minutes. I call this the one, two, three gin. And it's not every time that I will limit, my, limit myself to that, but sometimes I will. I'll, I'll give it a try and see how it works. And if you think it works, hit the thumbs up button underneath the video here or leave a comment. I would love to get some feedback from you guys. But let's give it a try. I went shopping on the Danish web shop, uh, Gins DK, for something new and something more exotic. And I found this, the Iron Balls Gin. So let's see what this is all about. Let the three minutes start now. It's not every day that we see a gin from, from, sorry, from Thailand, but Australian-born uh, Ashley Sutton managed to be the first to get a license to open a new distillery in Thailand in 31 years. Yes, a huge task to convince the authorities, I guess. And maybe that explains the slogan. The base alcohol is made from pineapples and coconuts, which, you know, are not very often seen in a gin. And for each batch, 500 pineapples are peeled and crushed, and about 100 coconuts are cracked. And this all goes into a fermentation tank for a week until, you know, the about 13% ABV is reached. And then it's all distilled and can now be used as the base alcohol for the gin. In the gin, you'll find things like juniper, lemongrass, mace, roasted nutmeg, uh, Cambodian pepper, ginger, uh, cinnamon, coriander seeds, and ginseng. Well, there's about 15 different botanicals in all, but not all of them are revealed. And the botanicals are left to macerate in the alcohol for a couple of days, and on the day that they do the distillation itself, a uh, freshly pulped pineapple is added in the bottom of the still, together with the botanical-infused alcohol, and then the process of distilling begins. It took Ashley over 600 recipe attempts to get this gin here just right. You know, when you smell it, you get these fine tropical touch of mango and slightly acidic pineapple. You get the cinnamon and aromatics from the lemongrass. It's a very, it's a very clean and fresh smell. Again, it really is very clean, very fresh. You get fresh tropical notes of the pineapple. You get this slight tingle from especially, I guess, the ginger. You, you sense this fresh piney notes, but it's very clear that juniper is not very present in this one here. The aftertaste, you really get this lemongrass aftertaste. I have to underline that this is not a truly fruity gin, but a very fresh gin with these tropical notes in it. Serve this as a gin and tonic, where you squeeze a little bit of lime into your glass and then add some of the Iron Balls gin, mix it with a Fever Tree Mediterranean tonic and garnish with some fresh pineapple and a sprig of basil. You know, this is such a fresh gin and tonic with a cool twist, I guess. And if you love pineapple, boy, you really, really should make this. Uh, blend three and a half deciliters of fresh pineapples with three and a half deciliters of ice cubes and 10 to 12 centiliters of iron ball gin and four centiliters of simple sh uh, sugar syrup and blend it for about a minute in your blender. Garnish it with a mint leaf once you've added it into two glasses and you have this wonderful tropical uh, gin daiquiri. That's it. There you have it, guys. One gin, two servings in about three minutes. 
You know, Iron Ball Gin is not only a very fresh gin with these tropical touches, it's also a very, very cool bottle. You know, I love this brass ring here on the stopper. I love this black string on the neck and I love this little pirate, uh, pirate skull that is imprinted in the paper label. Yep, it's a pretty cool gin and all. Damn, I just start talking about the gin again. Sorry, I'll get better next time. But until then.